pull back on your painting, take a step back, take your eyes back, don't zoom in on one aspen tree and paint it for 45 minutes just looking at that tree. Look at everything as connected. Hey Plain Air Painters, welcome to Learning Plain Air. This is Terry, where we help beginning Plain Air Painters make beautiful paintings. And in this, uh, this episode, I'm going to share with you the one thing, the one mistake that's going to keep you from uh, improving as a Plain Air Painter. It's something that experienced Plain Air Painters are well aware of, but when you're a beginning Plain Air Painter, this is something that you really need to know if you want to improve your Plain Air Paintings really quick. Hey, thanks for joining me. This is going to be fun. Okay, we have my dog Millie with me. We have my painting dolly and everything ready to set up here on location. I've spotted a, a good place to paint some aspen trees. It's late in the fall season here and uh, there are not too many leaves left. You can see up there that they've, they've blown off. And uh, so I wanted to get up here one last time and just show you how I impressionistically paint aspen trees. And this is a gorgeous place to do it right here. Stay tuned toward the end of the video. I'm gonna share with you the one mistake, the one thing that will keep beginner planar painters from improving. I realized this uh, one important concept early on as a beginner plein air painter when I was taking workshops and I want to share it with you because I promise you it will help you improve your plein air paintings. All right, let's get set up. Okay, I've got everything set up and I'm ready to go. Um, you may notice if you're watching closely that uh, my easel is not facing the scenery that I'm painting, which is to the right of me here. And the reason for that is you always want to uh, point your easel in the direction that the sun is facing so that your canvas and your palette, your paints, are in shadow and they're not all washed out by the light. So let's just take a quick look at what I got here. Um, I've got my paints all set up, a generous amount of paint. We've got some titanium white here. Um, we've got some yellow ochre, some permanent rose. It's hard to see, sorry, I'll get in the, some permanent rose, some alizarin crimson. And then we've got some, some cad orange right here, cad yellow light, sorry, cad medium, cad yellow light, phthalo green, um, cerulean blue, cobalt blue right there, ultramarine blue, and midnight black. So I've got a lot of paints out here, odorless terpenoid, and uh, I'm ready to go. And I'm gonna give you a little hint about my tip for uh, improving your paintings. And I want you to notice stage two of my painting process is called the abstract stage. And I'm gonna try to stay in it as long as I can throughout this painting. So there's a little hint on my tip toward the end of the video. All right, let's get to it. All right, in the first stage of my uh, painting process, it's called the uh, drawing stage. And if you've watched before, you may know I start out with a wash. It's just a thin, layer of paint using odorless terpenoid and really whatever color you want. Um, the purpose of the wash again is so that you can judge the lighter colors in your painting more accurately. Um, when you have that blaring white canvas staring at you it can be a little intimidating but also you're going to be able to read your colors better when you have a uh, when you have some sort of tone on the canvas. And so very watery paint you can use whatever color you want. Today it's a, it's a bright fall day, so I'm just using a bright color. All right, in the drawing stage, I just draw with my brush, and I'm just trying to get a quick sketch, a quick road map, um, so that I can get a design and a composition going. That's the purpose of my first stage. There's a far off distant mountain here that looks just amazing. There's a, an aspen forest that comes down high above that. This mountain tails off. I'm really trying to divide the complex landscape into three to five larger pieces. So you've heard me talk about my four P's, the pieces, placement, proportion, perspective. I'm trying to accomplish that really quickly, right away, to set my painting up for a successful painting. This will be the aspen forest. Right here. The other thing that I'm trying to do in the drawing stage is show where my darkest dark is in the painting. And in this painting, I've got some 
some nice, spectacular evergreen trees that are, uh, that are in with the aspen forest that will likely be my, my darkest dark. Just doing this very quickly, impressionistically. It's really, it's really just to get a road map. I'm just drawing. I haven't really started painting yet. These dark evergreens will provide a nice contrast of color and value when you get the pop of the, uh, the light aspen tree, so that'll be nice. The other thing you want to do is try to show light and shadow. This is mostly in shadow, the tree trunks of the aspen trees right now. But up top, the canopies of the trees are in light. So I want to make sure I realize that early on so I don't lose my way with light and shadow. All right, so basically I've completed my drawing stage here. I'm going to show you my four pieces. Piece number one is going to be this far off distant mountain. Piece number two will be the aspen forest beneath it, off in the distance, right here, this lighter piece. And uh, piece number three, will be the aspen forest right here which doesn't have much definition right now but it's going to be right here i know where it is and then uh, piece number four will be my foreground right here i've got some large rocks that i've will also act as my darkest darks in addition to these evergreen trees in front of and mixed into the aspen forest so let's go on to the next stage uh, which we call the abstract stage. Uh, probably not going to talk too much throughout this painting. I'm just going to let you enjoy it, maybe play some music, break in once in a while. At the very end, we'll talk about the one mistake that beginning plein air painters make that keeps them from improving. All right, thanks for joining me again. Welcome to Learning Plein Air. Okay, we're getting some of the lights now in uh, piece number one in the back. So I'm trying to show some perspective with a change in my value. And if you're a beginner planner or painter and you don't understand value, think of it like a light switch, uh, you know, from, from very, very light to very, very dark, you know. So I have the darkest darks and then I have my lightest lights in the back to show perspective and distance and depth in the painting. I have my, a basis of my sky in there as well. So we're uh, continuing to just block in large shapes with spots of color, the right value, the right temperature of the color, and in the right place. So this is that far off mountain. And it should have the least amount of chroma. When you hear the word chroma, what it means is just, I guess, brightness or, or power, power pack, power punch to it. So I'm just trying to keep all my, all my values correct and just block in large pieces of the landscape. And I'm just trying to do that very quickly before the light changes using my big number 12 brush. Mixing a little cad red, a little bit of uh, yellow ochre. A little bit of cad, cad orange, 
what I did was I took a purplish color by mixing alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue and then I added some opposing or complementary colors oranges and yellows to make it a grayish a grayish color that's on the warmer side with a little more cad orange and a little more cad red in there the mountains here in Colorado are full of minerals and so they have color to them which is pretty neat Sky is going to be a little bit lighter uh, the lower down you go. And more ultramarine blue, more purplish, the higher up you go. I'm just using a mixture of ultramarine blue, titanium white, and alizarin crimson, which is kind of a violet color. And the way I make those strokes is I just hold the brush like this very lightly. And you can hold it down, you can hold it toward the top of the brush, or kind of choke up, if you will, like a bat, and hold it closer to the ferrules, to the brushes, the bristles. Um, somewhere in the middle is comfortable for me, and then I just face it perpendicular to the painting. And this is how I impressionistically paint. Just making brush strokes in different directions. Just to kind of give that illusion of atmosphere. And I'm going to make it a little more purplish up here and up here. So you'll see that right now. There we go. That's the right color. All right, there's our sky. Just working on this large aspen forest that is beneath that extremely large mountain way off in the background. All the leaves have come off this aspen forest, but it's still a very pretty color, kind of a greenish gray color. It's got some nice color to it. It's on the lighter side, warmer side. So I'm using some, some titanium white, some yellow ochre, a little bit of cad yellow light. There's a little red in there to, to offset it and make it grayish. So again, when you have a green color, the opposite complementary color would be red. So you can use that to gray it down a little bit and take the, the brightness or the chroma away from it to show that it's got some color, but it's not right up in your face. It's off in the distance. Just using a little palette knife uh, for effect here, for light on the mountain. 
And I've got a mixture of cad orange, cad medium, some titanium white, and some greens in there. Just trying to show light and shadow on the mountain. Okay, so just working on the, the distant aspen forest back there, showing some light and shadow. It's starting to come together, but I still wanna I still wanna keep it impressionistic. I don't want to get too specific here. I'm just still blocking in my my colors and my values and trying to trying to make it read right, playing off the light and playing off the shadow, working all over the canvas in large shapes. Okay, before I get into that aspen forest, I'm gonna have a little more fun with uh, just some kind of pure dark colors. So I'm gonna go into some ultramarine blue in the shadows of these, of these uh, beautiful evergreen trees. I'm gonna kind of lean on the side of just kind of bright color instead of just trying to, you know, paint a green tree. I'm gonna paint the colors that I see in the shadows, even though it doesn't make much sense to my brain. I'm seeing some purples as the trees recede back off into the distance, I see this, this kind of cerulean blue faded color, purplish color as the, as the light hits them like this off in the distance, which is kind of fun. I'm gonna go with some alizarin crimson in this big, this big boy right here, just pure color like that. Kind of more of a purplish color right here at the base. I'll put in some nice purples to contrast the, the light, the orangish colors. It's complementary colors, purple and orange. And in here I'm gonna go with some fun phthalo green. Very powerful color, but fun to, fun to work with. Not too much, just hints of it. So when I put the aspen trees in, it'll be a nice contrast, which I'm gonna do right now, I promise. <laughs> I was watching some, a Bob Ross video with my girls this weekend, it's so fun, because I don't know about you, but I grew up as a kid watching him, and he inspired so many people. It was so, so fun to watch, you know? My grandfather would always laugh at me when I talked about him, because my grandfather was a, a fine artist, and uh, he, he didn't think that was fine art, you know, using a, a paintbrush from your garage and slapping it on your <laughs> canvas like he did, and, you know, dabbing the round brush on there. And, but I tell you what, it sure was fun. It sure, it sure was neat to watch and inspired me, you know, as a young a youngster. But there was a time when I, I really hated my desk job. And man, I just, you know, kind of God gave me a, a gifting and a passion to paint. And I've tried to suppress it so many times in my life. I don't know about you, you know, other things, you know, family and, you know, work and providing and, and making money and, um, fear often kind of kept me from pursuing painting full time, and uh, you know it's uh, it's something where you just got to kind of trust God, and, and I think that if it's something that you love and that you enjoy, then the money will follow. You probably heard that before, but I really found that to be true in my life. That's some pretty thick paint right there. Wow, it's kind of fun. You ever try that? You gotta be, you gotta be, not afraid to make mistakes. As I talked about in my previous video, as a beginning planner painter, if you can, if you can be free 
to make mistakes and scrape your painting, for example. I'll show you how I do that in one of my other videos coming up, but don't get so attached to things. View it as practice, experience. All right, speaking of Bob Ross, as he would say, it's time for the bravery test. <laughs> We're gonna put in this Aspen Forest here, and I kinda like what I have going on here, even though it might look messy to you. Uh, for me, I'm gonna bring it together in the end, but right now, I'm gonna go over top of all this with some Aspen trees, so uh, speaking of our childhood hero, Bob Ross, let's do what he did. This little tree is right here. See if we got the, the courage and the bravery to do this. I'm mixing up a mixture of cad yellow light, some phthalo green. These aspen trunks are in the sunlight. We got thick paint, wet and wet technique. Just going over top of everything, not painting in the lines, not a realist painter. I'm an impressionistic plein air painter. So time to not be afraid, ready? One, two, three, go. Oh yeah. That was fun. A little risky. I know. Trust me. I have an idea. I know what I'm doing. Just working on the aspen trunks. In the end, I'm going to pop the canopies with color. They're in direct sunlight right now. So that'll be fun. Some of these tree trunks are in, are in light and shadow. So I'll come back and refine that in a little bit. Do you see how I go over top of this dark aspen tree here to show contrast of light and dark? Purposely did that because it's interesting. Okay, I'm going to change my color. As I've said in previous videos, nothing is, nothing is always the same in the, in the light and the shadow. When you do your light colors, don't just find your light color and say, I like that color, and do all of your light objects or shapes in that color. I'm seeing, I'm seeing some greenish tree trunks. I'm seeing some orangish tree trunks. So I'm going to kind of get that orange color in right now. Let's just see how it looks here. Just a contrast of color over top of the light. I think I'm too orange there. I don't really like that because I think it's it's kind of screaming and for attention with my my orangish brights in the background. So I'm going to change that up and stick to stick to that more yellowish green color that the aspen trunks are. I just want a tad too much chroma there with the orange. So I'm going to go over that again. Thick paint, unafraid, having fun, no pressure, not trying to impress anybody. I'm showing you all my mistakes and all my successes so you can see real time what it's like to plain air paint, good, bad, or indifferent. Remember when my easel tipped over? Last video, I could have deleted that, but you know, when you have a French box plain air easel and uh, it fell over on me. But I wanted to show you that because things happen when you plain air paint. And that's the fun and adventure and joy of it, really. I'm not saying I want my painting to end up in the dirt like it has, but. Uh, if it were easy, everybody would be doing it, right? Okay, I'm going to work on these, these trunks a little bit here. So let's just see what we can do with light and shadow on those tree trunks. I'll show you how I do that. You can see this? I'm just working on the shadows in the aspen trunks here. We're going to kind of work toward finish here. So I'm just taking my palette knife and uh, dipping in a grayish blue mixture, a little bit of red in there, cad red. And I just kind of Use the edge of the palette knife like this in different directions to show some shadow on the shadow side of the tree trunk. 
So we have a nice contrast of light and shadow in that forest. I think I pretty much got what I want with that, but I just, I kind of take the edge of the palette knife like this and facing the canvas. Just little sideways motion with the knife. You know, you experiment and see what works for you. I'm not trying to uh, to be too detailed still, even toward the end of the painting. <clears throat> these are closer to me, so I'm going to make these a little bit a little bit more detailed. Aspen trees here in Colorado kind of have that that black those black little circles in there but they're not really pure black they they've got color I often see a lot of reds and a lot of a lot of blues in those but I do just want to put a hint of those in there not too much just to show that they are aspen trees and lead the eye to to believe that One thing I said before is you don't, when you do little details like this toward the end, you don't want to be, you don't want to do everything monotonously. Same size, same shape, same texture, make 5,000, you know, dots on the aspen trees. That would be a, a very bad thing to do. I just want to kind of pick and choose my places to show a hint of it so that when your eye scans the painting, It'll say, oh yeah, that's an aspen tree. Just enough to suggest. And that's probably enough for me right there. Now the fun part, we're gonna use some pure color and pop the canopies on these aspen trees. Let's do this. Okay, we're pushing toward finish here. Um, I've got the shadow colors in on the aspen trees here on the canopies and just kind of did those with a grayish green mixture and, and kind of brush strokes that they look like this for the most part just impressionistic thick strokes like that to show the canopy shadow side of things again everything has light and shadow so you want to show that so there's my shadows on the aspen trees and uh, I'm going to pop the, these now with the light side which are kind of a brilliant orange color and I'm just dipping in using some cad yellow medium and some cad yellow orange. And while I'm doing this if I could just kind of kindly ask you if you're getting value from these paintings these videos go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I try to do these every week or two and uh, I'm here for beginning plein air painters to try to help you become a better painter and make beautiful paintings. Whether you're just trying to find a hobby to decrease your stress or whether you want to sell your paintings one day and make a living of it, I'd like to help you. I'm on Instagram as well. Go ahead and follow me there. And uh, I also have a private unlisted video that takes you through the drawing stage, stage one of my process. And I'll take you step by step through that so it sets you up for a successful painting. Get the link down in the notes. Go to my website and get it if you'd like. I'll just continue to work on the, the light hitting these aspen trees. We kind of close toward finish and then of course I'd like to talk to you real briefly about that one thing that prevents many beginner plein air painters from improving. I'd like to share that with you. Something I discovered when I was when I was doing workshops and, and a beginner plein air painter. It was a kind of a nice realization that helped me improve my paintings. So I'd like to pass that on and do the same for you.
Real thick paint here, not mixing with anything. I'm just going pure color. And it's kind of fun. This is what plain air impressionistic painting is all about. You know, I talked about finishing in my last video. This is the time where you want to energetically and kind of passionately, quickly throw in those last strokes. And they're so fun to do. That's what Russian Impressionism is all about. So I'm just attempting to do that right now with some thick paint. And just trying to find the basic shape and form of these aspen trees. They kind of kind of go like a little triangle like that. And get wider toward the bottom. So see, I'm just seeing things in, in terms of in terms of shapes and colors. Palette knife here a little bit just for a different texture. The wind is blowing all these leaves off the trees. There won't be too many weekends where, where this is left. I imagine this might be the last weekend. So I'm really glad I'm up here doing this. And so I want to kind of show a hint of the wind, you know? I think when people see your painting, they should get a feel of, of when it was, you know? Like this, does it feel like fall to them? Is the wind blowing? And that's what I'm trying to do without overdoing it. And I want to contrast these, these lighter leaves onto the darker evergreen tree. And that'll, again, create contrast. If you listen to me, I, I'm always talking about that, you know, trying to create contrast with, with light and shadow. There's contrast of color, contrast of edges, lines, texture. The more you can mix it up and, and be creative and catch people off guard with things like that, the more curious and interested they will be in your paintings, the better paintings you'll have. Some smaller trees right here in the foreground that I just wanna show that are catching some light just really quick. See that? Just a few strokes and I'm done with the tree. <laughs> That's how you do it toward the end. You want to save some energy toward the end like I talked about. You don't want to finish tired. You don't want to make lazy tired strokes toward the end. It's the most, most important part of the painting really. pretty fun okay the light has disappeared on the uh, the aspen forest and so it's time to wrap the painting up uh, I'll give you a quick look at things here I purposely left it a little bit impressionistic and a little bit well let's just say unfinished uh, maybe not the right word but uh, a little messy <laughs> you decide I'll tell you why in a minute share with you right now that tip that I promised you on why beginning plein air painters may not see improvement in their paintings the most common mistake that I think uh, is out there and that happened to me and that is that I was painting trees and mountains and not shapes allow me to explain when you first start plein air painting the, the brain has a tendency to want to name an object define it outline it detail it to death 
And really effective impressionistic plein air painting is a process of unlearning the names of things and learning how to paint shapes with the right color, value, and temperature. And specifically what I mean is color is self-explanatory, value, how light or dark is it, temperature, how cool or how hot is it. And putting that brush stroke with the right color, value, and temperature in the right shape and just seeing things as shapes and spots of color and painting that way. Most of my painting is done impressionistically in the abstract phase on purpose and that's why I did the painting like this today to show you that um, you know as, as Sergei Bongard says paint what you see not what you know so my uh, encouragement to you would be to stop painting trees stop painting mountains stop painting every leaf on the tree look at things in terms of shapes colors and put it in the right spot so what you want to do is kind of just pull back on your painting take a step back take your eyes back don't zoom in on one aspen tree and paint it for 45 minutes just looking at that tree look at everything as connected look at the scene as connected as shapes and colors and uh, stage as long as you can at the very end bring it together all right hey thanks for watching uh, appreciate you being here subscribe to the channel watch another video please and uh, really appreciate you being here god bless take care